Yes. Uh, so I've tried playing Ark how many times? Quite a few. And I've tried the different um, Ragnarok, I think, was one of the islands or mm. maps that I actually really enjoyed. Um, Ragnarok's a great map. So Jan and I were playing, and when you're playing not on a server, you're actually tethered to each other. Yep. And I inadvertently... Did I drag you towards the Triceratops, or did you drag me towards the Triceratops? I'm sorry. Inadvertently? <laughs> triceratops no 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 <laughs> mikey you see that thing over there the three of them those are allosauruses they always hunt in packs and they're very what are you doing <laughs> i'm hunting um, and then later a brontosaurus got mad at me so i ran away not realizing mikey was on top of the cliff and dragged him off the cliff uh... um Ark is a lot of fun with friends. My favorite way to play Ark is on a private server with a small number of friends having adventures. Like for me, that's that's a great game. Find dinosaurs, tame dinosaurs, go, you know, find ruins. Yeah, I would. But there comes a point where you've kind of done it. I would genuinely say the only time I've had fun playing Ark is with other people. I, I've not found solo. It I find it all. less interesting. You can. I mean, yeah. if you're someone who wants to go to creative mode and build incredible structures, yeah. go for it. Um, but I've also pl played with people who simply cannot play these games because they, they feel like it's got no direction. Um, I've got a good friend, Matt, who the only type of open world survival game he likes is one where there's an event where one has to attack the other every seven days. Right. Um, or a game like Rust, which is a great example, where the maps reset every two weeks. So the idea is, can you conquer everyone else's bases in that time? Um, I don't enjoy that. I'm not a big PvP player. I like building. I like exploring. I mm. like, I was going to say making stuff, but that's building. Like, I like the social aspect of it. Um, so, I like one of the things I, I, I struggle zombies. with, with uh, any player versus player, is there's usually some sort of asymmetry in terms of skill. And if you don't, if you're, mm. if, if the, if the game is such that if you don't put in 40 hours a week, you will always lose, and there's not much more to the game other than that competitive nature. Then you're you're kind of no, you're going to lose, and you're probably not going to play anyway. A great example of a game that has a very high ceiling is something like Quake Champions, mm. or or a lot of the you know CS:GO etc. Th those all have a quite a high high speedrunner high ceiling. Yep. Oh, speedrunners. Remember when we we were playing speedrunners and we felt like we we're getting pretty good. Like, we were going through the map, and we were playing with our friends, and it was like, yeah, we got this. I went online to play with people. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't stand a chance. I didn't make it, like, a third of the way around the course. Speedrunners, an absolute, I loved, I, 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 I still love the game. But it, it's one of those games that you can see, if someone really, really did like it, they could get pixel perfect at the game. And that's right. what we were experiencing when both of us went online. It was... But basically, you're it you're, was murder. you're play, yeah, you're playing against people who know exactly the timings to press every button. The, 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 the skill divide was so big, I wasn't letting them enjoy the game because I was no challenge, mm. and vice versa. Like, you know, you couldn't yeah. enjoy the game because how have you done there that? There was no game. <laughs> so it's amazing. Um, and balance is difficult. That was an interesting digression from zombies. Balance is very difficult. And, and putting a meaning into a sandbox game is difficult because, by definition, they're not supposed to have a linear journey. Like, I don't mind playing a sandbox game until I'm done with it. Yeah. And then I'll come back to it later. Like, I'm, I, I keep coming back to Ark every few months. I love Ark. But I get bored of it. Like, and that's fine. That's, you know, what it's for. Um, yeah, a, a sandbox I don't know that game. I would enjoy Ark as much if it had zombies. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Tame zombies, breed zombies. Um, like technically, well, in, in one of the Walking Dead it. seasons, they pretty much kind of did that. Yeah, uh, and there's that woman with the the swingy swingy blade who had two of them on a leash. <laughs> that was an interesting bit when she came in. Yeah. Uh, so with the with the survival things like Ark, etc., I don't think they would work quite as well with zombies. I mean, seven days for to die is exactly that. It's interesting um, though, but I, I, I'd rather, I'd definitely rather play that. And maybe it's I don't like dinosaurs. It could very well be that that I don't find them very interesting. As I a, don't like as zombies. I quite like seven days to die. I mean, I get bored of it after a while. Yada yada yada. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering 
if it's just why would there be zombies instead of dinosaurs like part of the magic of arc is turning around and seeing movement and, yes. and trying to develop the expertise to know is that dangerous <laughs> right like the first time a tyrannosaurus rex comes around the corner that you weren't expecting is quite yeah. a moment i must admit that arc is one of the most beautiful games that i've played some of the way the islands are crafted i'm like i want to move here. except the font I hate right, the big glowy bubbly font everywhere. Like it's just, I hate. Like, it. Who who designed designed that? <laughs> like uh, okay, it's legible. I'll, I will grant you it is legible. Yeah, like, you can I'll see stop it. Legging it. <laughs> well, well, the, uh, the options with the UI is a big challenge. The options with the UI are basically: do you put so, uh, like a background in and then put the text on top of that, and now you can't see half the game going on? Yeah. So, it's but it's interesting because would I enjoy Ark as much if, if the zombies were dinosaurs? Like I could see in a, a, a situation where okay, you're you're lost in this mysterious island, and the dead keep rising. Yeah, you could make that compelling. I think it would have to be a very different game. This is our next uh, big game, Zombie well, Island. Because actually, Dead Island. Do you have it where it's something it? like constant flooding? You know, we've got you're constantly going to be clearing it out and pushing it back. That kind of zombie. Do you have it where every time it's nighttime, it's just lethal? Yeah. Like, what 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 does it mean? A lot of games, uh, when nighttime comes, the zombies are suddenly faster and more vicious. Okay, you could do it that way. But at that yes, point, that's the why mechanic. Zombies, in, why not just ghosts, or lights. monsters, or I don't know, withens or griffins or manticores? Um, but if we take a game that you and I have played a lot, let's say stick fight yeah would it be better with zombies oh if you killed a player and they all came back as zombies and then the only way of killing them was to get a headshot i mean, it like... might be um well that that's a, that's a it, game it actually came up because we were talking it? about having a level in tactics where in battle tactics where yep. there's zombies in the background and you could theoretically have them as a threat but i don't know that it adds anything I mean, short, as opposed to just window dressing for a level, which is fine. I mean, one of the versions of Last Man Standing is that when you kill another player, they become part of a horde that is against everyone. You know what modern that. fast screamy zombies remind me of more than anything else? Manic Xenomorph monkey. from Aliens. Yes. Yeah, okay. Get that. The same kind of scream, the same kind of movement, the same kind of you know fear in the dark. Well, with one extra thing with the Xenomorph, you don't know which wall it's on. Right. But yes, the whole very fast, very deadly, will appear out of the shadows. Which is interesting, because the original Alien was a very different movie. Have you um, played Alien Isolation? As Jaws in Space. I have not, but I've seen footage of it. It's, it's the kind of game that I'm not playing that. I want to play it, but probably stream it in VR. And you want to do the reaction shot thing, don't you? <laughs> I think just watching me... I think you should get some pearls just so you can clutch them. I don't think that's what that means, but okay. <laughs> You're thinking of a different expression. Am I? I don't know. I <laughs> tend to make them up. <laughs> so that's fine. Yeah, Alien Isolation. I got to the, the point where the alien appears. That's as far as I've gotten, I, I definitely was scared at points in that game. Not terrified or anything along those lines, but very jumpy, very skittish. Because the soundscape and the environments are all open and quiet and noises in the distance. And I... <laughs> so I was staring... I think I think the, the first time the alien appears, there is a lift that you've got to get in to within, I don't know, about I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And I was... As I do, I was gawping at the graphics on the wall and I was trying to work out if that was a real-time shadow or whether it was an animated texture. And then I lost my head. <laughs> yep. It's like, oh, this isn't a look-and-see game. then. <laughs> but it's interesting because I was just thinking that the Aliens franchise tends to have extraordinary aesthetic attention to detail, whether it's sound or visuals mm. or whatever else. I mean, between the design of the Alien, you know, Geiger's whole thing or the yeah. soundscape then i realized there have actually been bad games but 